Okay, it's been quite a while since I've been on here, so apologies for those who have been anxiously waiting for um, a new video. I've been incredibly busy. Um, thank you so much, all of you who have left some really positive comments asking for me to upload some more videos. It's very encouraging, and thank you for taking the time to watch them. Uh, so today what I'm going to just do, I'm going to start off with doing a series of videos. I'm going to put on about three or four um, new videos up today. Um, and the first one's going to be quite a simple, basic one. We're going to be looking at these metal snaps. Some of you may know them as poppers. You tend to find these obviously on um, like biker jackets or um, just anything that needs to be generally fastened. This is an option other than having a button. Um, or a, a jean stud. Um, these are metal, they come in different types of metal finishes and they also normally come with four parts. So there's the cap that you have, you've got this part here, you've got um, the back part. These two parts are commonly known as the male and female parts and at the bottom here is actually um, the moulds that you are used in the fashion industry to apply them onto a garment. So when you're at home, you're probably generally using um, a little tool that they give you with the pack, but these are the tools that you would tend to see in an actual factory. So what I'm trying to do today is just gonna show you how to create one of these snaps very easily. Um, for those of you who are at the beginning stage, you'll find this very easy to do as well. So I'm just gonna go to my shape tool and I'm going to select the ellipse tool. Um, once I've let me just move this tool over a bit. I'm going to then start drawing my circle, but this time I'm going to hold my Alt and my Shift key together, and I'm going to drag outwards to get my circle. Obviously, at the moment you cannot see the circle outline, so I do need to give it a fill and a stroke. So by clicking on the um, default fill and stroke button underneath the toolbar, you can see I've now got a fill and a stroke color. So at the moment, we've got a round circle. We can actually just leave it as being round, but we could actually put a fill on this to make it have more of a metallic fill. So one of the things that you may want to use is something called gradient. And if I hover over the um, tool here, um, you can see the shortcut for that is G. If I click on that, I can see that the gradient dialog box pops up. So if I highlight this box and actually click on the gradient fill here, you can see it fills that circle with the gradient color. Now, the gradient color also appears in the fill box. Uh, just to give you a bit of a heads up as well, actually Illustrator has a few default um, gradient swatches. And basically, if you go to the drop down box in the swatch section and go to open swatch library, you'll see that they have a variety of um, color swatches that have a variety of different um, colors. So, for instance, if I go to the metal, you'll see there's some more options there. Now, basically, what a gradient is, if you can see here, it goes from one color to the other, or it could be from one uh, pattern to the other or sometimes it can go from a color to a transparency. So it becomes um, clearer, so going from a black until there's no fill on it at all. Now, just going to this slider, you can see, I'm gonna explain a bit more about this slider before we continue drawing the snap. But whilst this is still highlighted or has the abandoned box around it, you can use this slider to actually um, change or amend how much of the colour you wish to see in the gradient. So as you can see, if I move it up, you can see that it starts to get less and less. And likewise, if I move the black down, you can see it starts to get more intense. Um, also, you can see that this gradient goes from dark to light. But however, if you go to the dialog box and select the drop down arrow near the colour swatch, you'll see that you've got some more options here. So you've got linear, fade to black, you've got gradial and a soft uh, black vignette. So there's quite a few different options there, but I'm going to suggest you select the radiant, uh, radial gradient. Um, basically that's going from light to dark, and if you're thinking about a snap really, that's quite a nice effect to have for a snap. Um, 
The other thing that I wanted to just inform you about the gradient is if you do not want these colours, like the white and the black, it's quite easy to change those. And how you would really do that is if I wanted to input red into this gradient, for instance, I would go to the swatches and I would drag it into the slider here. And as you can see, it starts adding colours. And I can do that to as many colours as I wish. So, then you'll say, how do you get rid of that if you don't want that anymore? And literally, if you just click on the colour you don't want and drag away, it gets rid of that colour completely from the gradient fill. Okay, so now we've done that, um, I'm going to continue drawing the snap. So let me move this out of the way so you are able to see exactly what I'm doing. Got our tool up here. So, now I've drawn the cap part of the snap, I'm going to try and draw some of the other parts of the snap. So if I hold the Alt key and wait for the two-way arrow, the black and the white arrow to come, and if I hover over to the centre of the circle and hold down and drag, I'm able to copy that circle that I've just drawn. So let me show you that again. Black arrow tool, making sure that this has been selected, holding the Shift key, waiting for the two-way arrow, go to that centre dot and drag. So you'll see that I have two of the same thing. Okay, now we want this to look a little bit more of what's going on here. So we're going to draw the other part. If we get our black arrow tool, do Command C, which is copy, Command F, which is paste to the front. And if we hold our Alt and our Shift key together and drag inwards, we can copy that circle basically and you'll see that I now have another circle that is exactly the same sort of circle, same shape because I copied it and pasted it to the front and then scaled it down. I can now get rid of the fill because I don't want to have a fill on that because you can see there's no fill on that. If I wanted to, I could put another colour on it, but for the moment, I'm going to leave it as it is. So this is a really basic way of giving yourself a snap. Now, I could also change the colour of my gradient. So if I go to the um, gradient again, I can change this so maybe it's a little bit darker on the inside. And I'm going to go back to selecting radial. So there's a bit of a point of difference between what's happening on the um, let me get rid of some of these colours. What's happening on the inside of that hole where it's slightly open? Okay, so then I'm going to draw this one. So again, I'm going to get my black arrow tool, select both of these snaps, hold the Alt key, go onto the centre point, and drag downwards to like duplicate that shape. Now again, I can do the same for this, I'm just duplicating this, I can change this slightly so there is a different or um, some, you know, some sort of difference between, point of view between the two. This time round I'm going to copy that circle again, Command C, Command F, and I'm going to give myself a little bit of a rim. So if you can see on that one we've done there, there is a little bit of a rim on it. And I'm going to take the fill off so I just get the line alone. Okay. So now I've got two different types. So I'm looking at my cap, I'm looking at my female part, and this is my male part. Now I'm not going to go as far as to draw the back part because it's not very often that you actually see it. So we're just going to work with what we have at the moment. And with this now, what I can actually do is I can actually save these as symbols so that I can open them up in any file and they're not just um, specific for this file that I've created today. So what a symbol is, is it's basically, if you think about all your trims, like your zip puller, your buttons or buttonholes, you can create a library of these different trims into different symbols so that you can use them for different files. But there's also another beauty about symbols which I'm going to show you. First, I'm going to show you how to save a symbol. So if we go to our, let's close our gradient, we don't need that anymore. If we go to Windows and select Symbols, you'll see that Symbols will appear already in your download di as a dialog box. And you'll see there's already some saved there already. Now, all we're going to do is I'm going to scale these down a bit so they're a little bit smaller. 
they don't, you don't have to do this, but I prefer to work with them a little bit smaller. And all I'm going to do is drag this symbol, this circle, into the um, symbols dialog box. And I'm going to get this option to create a new symbol. So I'm going to call this cap. And then I'm going to just do it as snap. Actually, let's go the other way. Snap, cap. Okay. Now I'm going to change the type. It's not a movie, so we're going to uh, tick the, bot the circle that says graphic. And then we're going to just say, OK. And as soon as we do that, we're going to see the symbol now appears in the symbols library. So again, I'm going to show you that again. Black arrow tool, selecting the uh, female part of the snap. I'm going to drag it into my symbols, select graphic, and I'm going to call this female snap part. Select graphics, as I said before, and then select OK. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. Drag this over into symbols, graphic style, and male part to snap. Uh, male part off snap. Let's try and get this better. OK, and then I'm going to select OK. So now I've got all these symbols in this library over here, well, in the symbols dialog box. Uh, what I'm going to do also is I'm going to save this symbols library. So what I do, how I do that is I go to the drop down box in the top right hand corner and I select save symbols library. Now, it's important that you save this symbols library somewhere where you can find it because often more than not, not Often more than not, often more than not, um, we find, have sometimes have problems finding where we save things. So I'm going to save it onto. I'm going to save it onto the desktop because I find it easier to find things for myself on the desktop. I can go and change this later um, another point. So I'm just going to call this Metal Trims Library. And then I'm going to keep it as AI and I'm going to say save. Okay, I'm going to drag that back later in another file. Um, so, but before I do that, I'm just going to show you another advantage of actually doing things as symbols. Um, and basically, if I was to have the snap on a garment, I'm just going to use this. If I had this snap on a garment, um, on a garment which uh, has about eight different snaps, like so, and suddenly, uh, uh, as a designer or a design assistant, you're told that actually this snap needs to change to something else or it needs to have a new design on it or um, it's going to have a letter on it or a logo. So let's just show you what is possible with this. So you can imagine if you only have if you have eight different snaps of the same kind on one garment, how it may be frustrating that you have to change all the snaps to have this new change, i.e. the logo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change one of these snaps. So I'm going to double click on it and it's going to ask me, you're about to edit the symbol definition. Any edits to the symbol will be applied to all its instances. Do you want to continue? So I'm going to say OK and I'm going to, you're, you're going to visually see what this actually does and why we write OK. So I'm going to click OK. And for instance, I want to put a logo in this. So I'm going to go to my lips tool. I'm going to put a logo around the edge of this circle. So I'm going to draw my circle here. I don't need to have a fill on this at this point. I'm just going to make sure that it is aligned to the center as well. So if I go to select both of them and I go to the top here where it's giving me some alignment um, options, select the horizontal one. Then I'm going to go to my text tool and I'm going to type on the path because I'm now going to add in my um, logo. I'm going to make the text a little bit smaller so I'm going to take that down to six 
And I'm just going to write, um, what brand can we have? Smith. I'm going to take this down a little bit more so that it fits in a bit better. So let me just select that and actually get that down to about two. So I've got my logo going around the edge of this, you can see, or around the top part. I'm just going to leave it like so. Now, as I said, we had eight of these on one garment, for example. Now that I've added the Smith on it, if I double click on this now, or click away, I should find that because it is a symbol, it will apply the logo to all the instances or all the snaps that I have used as a symbol. Okay, so let me show you that again. I've created this as a symbol. Let's just duplicate this a few times just, just to show how they all change. So I've just duplicated this by holding the Alt key. And now with this, I'd like to change this so that actually sometimes when you look at snaps, on, especially on jean ones, you get like a little pattern or sometimes you'll get like a, sometimes people have like a star going around the outside. So I'm just gonna kind of do a sim similar thing. So I'm gonna click onto this symbol and it's gonna ask me the same question again. I'm gonna go okay. And this time I'm going to add some stars to this, embossed stars. So I'm just gonna select the star here, the shortcut for that. Um, well, there isn't one for that, but if you go to the shape tool, you'll scroll down and see there's a star tool option. Then I'm gonna go again, select the star one, draw out and create my star. My star is gonna have the same um, gradient fill. So let's go back to our swatches. Actually, we can select the gradient from here and it is going to have a black outline. Okay, now the outline's a little bit thick, so I'm gonna take that down to 0 0.25. Actually, I might take it even smaller to 0 0.1. Okay, so now I've got my star. I can duplicate this star, so there's one at each quarter. I can make sure they're aligned if I want to as well. So I'm gonna align these two. Again, going back up to the top, selecting the align tool, selecting both stars again, and again, now I've got my star. Now if I click away from this symbol, if you notice everything else has been grayed off, it means that I'm only working on this in isolation on this symbol. And if I click away now, you'll see that it has also applied it to the other snaps. Okay, so as I said before, we've saved this as a symbols library. Now the, what, mean, what that means is if I open a new file or a new document, okay, I can see that when I look at my symbols, I don't have them there anymore. And so if I want to use those same symbols that I use or created on the, in this file, I will have to go back to symbols, go to the drop down arrow and open, open symbols library, other library because it's not any of the illustrator default ones. And then I will go and find my snap library where I saved it on the desktop. And I'm just going to go open. You must open it up in Illustrator. You should do it this way and not go to file or your windows and try and drag it in. If you do so, it will not work. So it's always best to go to the drop down bar, bar um, arrow at, in the symbols, open symbols library, and then it will say other if it's not already showing here. So that's a wrap. I hope you found that helpful and maybe you can use these snaps for the biker jacket which I will be doing a more advanced version to that video shortly. Thank you, take care, all the best with it.